a terrific day for the averages, let's not forget that there's at least one major part of the economy that's got some real issues, bricks and mortar retail. We tend to be sweeping in our view that traditional retailers are dying. You hear it all the time that there's nothing that can save them. But perhaps that's too damning. Perhaps there's real opportunity here after months and months of underperformance. That's why tonight I want to check in with the one guy who seems to have a terrific read of the whole industry. He's been very negative. Matthew Boss, the fabulous retail analyst at J.P. Morgan. And I don't have analysts on the show. You know that. I want to get a better sense of what's working in this group because I think that the consensus might be wrong. Mr. Boss, welcome to May of Money. Good to see you, Matt. Have a seat. Thanks for having me, Jim. Okay. Uh, we're to kind of... Critical moment here. Uh, everyone's really just said it's just bad to worse, bad to worse, bad to worse. You have a report this morning. You're saying that may be wrong. Tell me about it. Look, you're talking to probably the most negative guy over the past 18 months. Without a doubt. What I think is interesting here is you look at the first quarter, the second half of that quarter, March and April, materially improved. Look at a Foot Locker who printed today down low double digits in terms of same store sales in February, improving to high single to low double the remaining the remainder of the quarter. A real key point, we know that the U.S. is overstored, but we're starting to take the correct steps. For over 4,000 store closures announced in the past 18 months, it's a big step in the right direction. I think this is still multi-year, right. but the companies know what they're up against. They know about the brick and mortar versus the e-commerce. We're still, we're still really focused on the key factors, which to me is convenience, value, and innovation. Mm -hmm. That's where we like the off-pricers, the dollar stores. Right. We also like the athletic sector. But I think, you know, while maybe we're not at the absolute trough, I think there's real opportunity to own retail here. You just still need to be selective. Well, you have uh, been in inspirational a lot of my thinking. Uh, TJX, uh, Burlington, lately Dollar Tree. Uh, you had Foot Locker. You said good things. It looks to me, I'm not saying, you're right, I don't want to you know, call the trough, but what you're saying is, is that there are winners there are companies that people should be open-minded to, and Ollie's, which, so, you know, I, I, I tell, ask people about it, they don't know it, but people didn't know what Limited was at one point. They didn't know what Blockbuster was before it went under, getting 2,000%. They didn't know what Walmart was. Yeah. You have some winners. Yeah, there's absolutely winners. You look at the off-price sector, the world is coming to them in 4,000 closures, all the disruption. Disruption is the friend of the off-price sector. Right. I think what's, what is hurting some of the department stores the value perception is complicated today, and they're not the most convenient. Convenience is Amazon, convenience is right. e-commerce. It's value and convenience. That's what the, that's what the off-price sector has today. TJX, look, I think business, even during this disruptive period, continues to be strong. But the stock doesn't go anywhere. You've had margin constraints, and I think those will begin to roll off okay. as the year progresses. This is their toughest compare of the year. I think TJ sets up well from, from here. I think Burlington has the opportunity to double their margins, double wow. their store count. So we really like Burlington. Ollie's, as you said, smaller cap name, but a real up 234 stores. We had them on the road last week. The CEO is talking about the best closeout environment in 35 that, years. People don't realize stores, things can double. They can triple. That's why, that's right. I mean, uh, when retail first became regional and nationwide, that's when you could spot them. And always that's is right. that, that kind of story. You use special methodology. For instance, today, satellite data points to 400 basis points March, April traffic. What does that mean? So a real differentiation point that I think J.P. Morgan brings to the table is their focus on giving us the resources that others don't have. Orbital satellite data is basically the counting of cars. It's the counting of the foot traffic in and out of these stores. It's, unbi it's, it's unbiased data that to us gives us a differentiated point of view. I combine that with our own field work. I have a really strong team of analysts that's literally in brick and mortar stores you know, once a week. And so what we do is we look at this orbital satellite data, we combine that with our own store work, we then dig into the models, and that's where we come up with our mosaic thesis. What you're seeing is that that satellite traffic has moved from positive low singles in 2014 to negative mid singles today. But I think we may be seeing a plateauing in that level of negative. And again, that's as you think about this capacity coming out. Right. I think we're just at the tip of the iceberg of people starting to focus on that, where 
you think about the market share opportunity for the long-term mm -hmm. survivors, as you think about the Nikes and you think about the Foot Lockers, you think about the off-pricers, even the department stores. The department stores have been in decline. They've lost market share. Right. But the question is, I think if we've hit that peak, these closures will continue, but the real key is how many year over year. Right, now one last, let's leave it on this. You have been the most negative. People have tried to call bottom over and over again, Gap stores, everyone's thrown in the tail. You went the other way this mm. morning, Gap stores? So on the Gap, we're seeing Old Navy solidify. That's half of the story here. So last quarter you saw Old Navy really outpace the retail sector. I think you're gonna see the same thing this quarter. We're seeing subtle changes at the core Gap. It's not turning overnight. We're not expecting it to turn overnight. I think they have room on the margins, especially on the SGNA. So the call here is, look, we, We've been negative on the gap. The stock has underperformed the S&P by 50% in the past 18 months. I think it's time to move to this side, especially as we look forward here to the fall back to school and holiday, where Weather Trends International is literally calling for a perfect back to school setup and a nice strong start to holiday with a colder November. The Gap Stores is not going to be a name that, that I'd want on the short side heading into a setup like Excellent. that. Excellent. Let's leave it like that. Remember, I don't have analysts on the show, but some guys do original, non-derivative research. This is one of them. This is Matthew Boss, Managing Director of Department Stores and Specialty Soft Lines at J.P. Morgan with an incredible call that I think. Time to stop short. Maybe time to start buying. Mad Money's back into the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.